Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to the show. I am really excited about today's episode, and I want to make it clear that, yes, I'm excited about this episode because I think these aspects of your journey will give you an incredible base to build on and won't make you, you know, despise me and fitness as a whole. However, I am also really excited because I needed this. If I had somebody stick a Xanax in my mouth and make me follow the basics when I was starting out, I would have saved myself a lot of grief. I think that there is a certain panic and time constraint that comes with starting a fitness journey for a lot of people. A lot of us don't start working at these things for fun. We start because something has made us uncomfortable enough that we head to the gym despite, you know, the massive looming hangover from, you know, the old us. But this is the new you. You are now the epitome of green juice and gratitude journaling, and you are ready to get this shit done. You're ready to make a change. For some people, getting healthier or working towards a goal just comes from wanting to feel better, and that's amazing. However, I've been in the CrossFit world for long enough to know that the extremes of health and fitness are laced with insecurity and sweating out the demons that we all should have been dealing with in therapy instead. So my goal with this particular episode is to give you somewhere to start that isn't off the deep end, because that's where so many people tend to start And obviously, we know how that tends to go. The most common cause of not sticking to a change like this is that your change is massive and it makes no sense for the life that you already have built. You are really unlikely to wake up from skipping the gym for the 20th year in a row and having cigarettes for breakfast and become this person that works out twice a day and doesn't eat anything that isn't certified organic and is just perfection, right? Let's start by having a side of protein with your nicotine breakfast, and then, you know, we'll go from there, shall we? It doesn't have to be this massive thing. So I have these seven things that I truly believe nearly anybody can implement and maintain. And if you generally suck at sticking to things, maybe don't implement every single one starting the second that this episode ends. Pick one, get used to it for like a week. Once you're doing it every single day, add another one, same thing. The second worst case scenario here is that you take seven weeks to get all of these incorporated and you never have to create these habits again. And the first worst case scenario is that you cut this episode right now and pick up a juice cleanse instead. But, you know, proceed as you must. I'm going to dive right into them and get started. The first one is just to eat real food. And I promise the guidelines are not all this basic, but it's seriously, goddamn, it's not that hard. Here's the thing. If you are never going to count calories or macros or put a lot of mental energy into more intense guidelines, the puzzle piece sort of approach, this is likely going to mean that you can allow yourself a little bit less bullshit. The more you do want to puzzle piece things together, you want to weigh things, you want to measure things, you want to, you know, track everything, then you can fit in more bullshit food because you know the quantities in which you should have it to still reach your goals. If you don't want to deal with that, you have less of it. Don't overcomplicate it. Assess how you generally are and roll with it. And here is the thing. I want you to eat the best quality food that you can. If you make a million dollars a year, yes, you should go buy grass-fed. You should go buy organic. You should go buy these things. However, most of us don't make a million dollars a year. It's not that serious. If you can't afford grass-fed unicorn every single week, you do not have to give up as a whole. People on Instagram, everywhere out in the world are all for everything has to be organic and no bad ingredients and all of these things. Block them. You don't need them in your life. Do your best and your best is good enough, especially to start. My next one, eat about 15 grams of fiber for every thousand calories or so that you ingest. If you have no idea how many calories you eat, start by aiming for about 30 grams of fiber a day. If you've never tracked any sort of fiber or calories and basically have no quantitative measurement whatsoever and you don't plan on it, then again, you're going to have to make more of an effort to have a vegetable, oats, legumes, beans, things like that at every single meal to ensure you're hitting this fiber goal. Fiber could really be its own episode, but it's so important that you're getting this shit in. If you have any issues, fiber is going to carry any of that extra shit out of your system, extra hormone stuff floating around, anything that needs to get out, fiber is your gal. If you bloat, if you have digestive issues, if you are legitimately full of shit, fiber is going to solve these issues. 
And if it doesn't solve them completely, it's certainly going to help. Gut health is super trendy right now, so maybe this will convince you. It's really good for your gut to eat shit that has fiber in it. I'm all done here, but know that I will show up at your home if you get some fiber one powder and get out of eating it like an adult. I will find you. I will haunt you. Eat real food, not a supplement to get this in. Next one, another classic here, water. Drink half your body weight in ounces every day. If you're 150 pounds, you drink 75-ish ounces of water per day. Don't take it too seriously. Get in the general ballpark throughout the day. You'll be fabulously hydrated. Your skin will glow. Everything will be wonderful. Hydration is one of those things that I think people have been a little bit too strict about as far as guidelines go. A lot of the peer-reviewed literature kind of is starting to point to just drinking according to thirst. However, I am a great example of someone. I would drink zero ounces of water a day (laughs) if I went off of thirst. I don't really know why. I just am not someone who naturally gravitates towards drinking water. So for me, I have to make this more of an effort. If you are sipping on water all day and you don't quite make it or you go a little bit over, don't worry about it. As long as you are drinking water and you are hydrated generally, your color of your pee is not dark yellow or crystal clear, you're good. You're good. Don't freak out about it. So speaking of not freaking out, number four spot is going to stress management. I swear to God, if you just mentally tuned me out, you better know that you need this more than anybody else. Your type A ass is listening to a fitness podcast in your spare time. I promise you that you probably need to chill out a little bit. You don't have to meditate for an hour here. Like write down one thing you are grateful for every single morning. Walk for at least 10 minutes a day without your phone or other distractions or things that are going to stress you out. Or literally just put your feet up against the wall for five minutes at the end of the day. Close your eyes and take some deep breaths. You have to do something that is going to tell your central nervous system that you are not in imminent danger and that we're all good here. Your body has to know that it can go into rest and digest. This is especially true if you identify as someone that's always doing a million different things, someone that doesn't know how to relax. You're not doing yourself any favors by being hyperproductive. Long term, you're not going to get nearly as much done compared to if you took five minutes out of your day and brought yourself back to center. Implement something within your routine for stress management specifically and stick to it. It's a responsibility that you have to take on and it's not something that you can really just skip and get away with, especially long-term. So coming into our next one, we've got a step goal. In general, aim for at least 6,000 steps a day if you're more sedentary. If you have a desk job or something like that, This is going to be fairly challenging, especially if you work long hours. It's very hard for every single person to get 10K steps in every single day if you are forced to sit for most of your day. I definitely don't believe that you should be walking around your living room in circles manically at nine o'clock at night because you did not reach your step goal. However, I do believe in implementing one to generally have it on your mind, to park a little bit farther away, to take the stairs, to do those little things. And this is especially helpful even if you are active on the days that you aren't in routine. So for me, I'm a fitness coach. I'm on my feet all day and I can easily take 20,000 steps a day on the days I coach. I walk the dog, I'm running around all day. On Sundays, my God, I'll forget to take more than 10 steps if I don't actively think about it. You have to keep that consistency throughout and it can really add up. Your non-exercise activity is the majority of your calories burned throughout the day. So if you are really, really sedentary most of the day, you're not going to be getting the most out of the plan that you're on if you are trying to lose fat, if you are trying to increase your health measures, things like that. Keep it to at least a minimum. I think between 6 and 10K steps a day is fabulous for most people. If you have a really active job, yes, some days you might have more, but use this on weekends when you don't really want to move. (laughs) So that brings us to number six. So if you're still here, wonderful. That says a lot about your success already. And I'm proud of you because this has been a ramble. Number six is to try different forms of exercise until you find a version that you like. I have made an entire career out of fitness. Literally 100% of my income comes from the fitness industry. I am sitting here telling you that if I had based my life decision to exercise or not off of a spin class, I would be in a very different line of work. The first time I went, it bruised my ass. I was sad the entire time. I had no fun, okay? I'd be in a very different situation and had space regarding fitness. 
However, I learned that I have enough demons that CrossFit works for me. So you have to try different things until you find something that you actually like. I am actually a massive fan of Zumba because I have met so many people that Zumba was the one thing that they went with their friends. They had so much fun. They didn't really feel like they were exercising and it got you up and active for an hour out of the day. I'm actually such a huge fan of that. Do I think it's the best if you're trying to, you know, train with a purpose of having some sort of end goal performance wise? No, of course not. But if you want to just jump around, get moving and have fun and not dread it, I think it's a great start. Going for walks with your friends, same thing. It doesn't have to be this insanely intense regimen, but you do have to try different things until you find something you like. That is your assignment. If you have not found something you like already, go start trying different things. A lot of different gyms you can drop in for like 10 to $20 to try a single class and they're going to try to sell you on it. So you'll kind of get a really good idea of what's going on. Ask questions, talk to the people in class, see how long they've been there. If you meet someone that's been doing it for 10 years, you know that it's probably sustainable. My final tip to you is something that you can do right now. I am absolutely begging you to stop trying to hate yourself into the body of your dreams. I have never once seen it be successful in the hundreds of clients that I've come across. Maybe it works for a month, but then, you know, you're back to your cigarette breakfast and now you have a side of whiskey with it too because you're pissed. It's You can't come at this and hope to shame and guilt yourself into doing what needs to get done for the goal that you have in mind. Get excited and throw away your scale if it makes you cry and focus on how good it feels to give a shit about yourself and your health. If you are someone that needs to redefine your goal, that's totally okay. If your goal your entire life has been to be as small as possible, it's not going to happen in a day where you switch over to just training to see what your body can do and appreciating it for its movement. That's not realistic. And I'm not asking that of you. What I am asking is to try to find a reason for doing all of this that does not come from a negative place. It shouldn't be out of fear that you won't find a partner or that your partner won't find you attractive. It shouldn't be out of fear of gaining weight or for a certain event. And then you're kind of don't have a plan after that. You should find something within you and explore a little bit and figure out why bother? Why bother long term? Are you someone that wants to have kids? Are you someone that has grandkids and you really want to be able to play with them? There's always a deeper reason that can connect people to the reason that they should care about their health. That's not going to come from some ridiculous standard that you're trying to hold yourself to just being fueled by hating yourself scrolling through Instagram. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to stop having cigarettes for breakfast. Just have some protein with it. Seriously, it's not the end of the world. I don't want to ever come across as preachy or know-it-all-ish or that you have to change your entire life in order to incorporate fitness into it. That is a huge reason why I started this is you should not have to give up everything that you enjoy, good for you or not, to incorporate health and fitness. It shouldn't be this gate-kept thing that you have to be perfect and all of that in order to participate and be a part of. So have your cigarette for breakfast, have some egg whites with it, put the yolks in there. I'm sure you don't have enough vitamin D and go find something that you genuinely enjoy. If you listen to all of this and you make even one of these small changes, I promise you're off to a good start. (laughs) So please share this if you can. And really don't take everything, especially starting out so seriously. Bye guys. (laughs)